Hello, my name is Mark. I'm a senior support engineer at HashiCorp, helping customers with their service mesh. And today I'll be doing a quick deep dive into Envoy metrics. The Envoy project has many use cases to help implement your solution into your environment. These use cases can go from service mesh, whenever you have a microservice full of services, an API gateway, or just baking Envoy's proxy into your code base. These implementations can take time to troubleshoot and Envoy metric can really help diagnose the problem. And since my experience comes from a service mesh side, I'll be doing more of a deep dive into Envoy metrics for that aspect. The value of Envoy and its metrics do shine in its ability to become an agnostic tool between service mesh providers like Console and Istio. And you can also pull in specific configuration data to make sure that service mesh providers like Console and Istio are working correctly. And lastly, you'll be able to understand how your services are becoming healthy or not healthy within the mesh by checking out Envoy's proxies config dump. So I'll be depicting a scenario to help do more of a deep dive for a better understanding of Envoy's metrics. So say that you have a platform team that's looking to implement north to south traffic using Nginx so that it can reach your upstreams or certain applications within the service mesh. Let's just call these green octagon shapes uh, internal portals for your employees. And you start running into 503s or 504 request timeout issues that you might know where to check, such, such as the Envoy logs, but it's not really giving you much information at that time. So this is where I would leverage Envoy metrics. So the first thing I would check is the upstream CX connect fail metric, which is a pretty general uh, metric showing the projection of established connections. And these should increment whenever 503 responses happen during the request. And this usually happens at the layer four or TCP level. I would try to catch a pattern by using TCP dump along with checking the incrementation of this metric, just so that you can have a better idea. And then from there, you can use connect timeout to make sure that um, if that metric increments, then you probably want to use that timeout configuration uh, to tune it in all the way. The upstream request timeout is at the layer seven HTTP request level. So whenever you use HTTP from your Nginx ingress to reach your service mesh, this may respond with the 503. This usually happens a lot if you're implementing within the service mesh and you can try to configure it on the downstream, specifically the request timeout configuration to tune it and see how that helps. And this one can be a bit more niche because it can be shown as intermittent in the metrics. Uh, but the upstream CX idle timeout is a metric that you can check on both downstream and upstream to see how they are aligned. And usually the solution for this is to make sure that your backend configuration, specifically like an internal portal app, has an idle timeout or a similar metric or similar configuration that can be tuned and aligned with Envoy's idle timeout. Uh, this way that if there's a connection that's trying to be closed, um, it'll wait a bit longer just in case it is taking a bit more time or it is being idle. So we've got gotten to the timeout metrics, but what about listeners? Envoy's listeners are just ports that are open to check or listen on connections between your services. So if we're looking at this picture, we're in the mesh and we see dashboard and counting and these two listeners that are on port 5,000 and 20,000. So if I'm able to understand these, I can try to do a deeper dive on these type of metrics. So we see listener 5,000 is an outbound listener that helps redirect the original destination to the upstream. And then we have port 20,000 that is just to help with uh, validation uh, for mutual TLS, and this is the public listener. And with that, we can try to diagnose if there's a listener destroy metric that shows how many connections are being destroyed. Um, that'll be helpful to understand how this works. And if there's like a listener TLS metrics that's incremented, we can confirm that the mutual TLS validation is working. So that really gives you a wholesome picture 
of what's happening with that side of the metrics. And we can't forget the health status from the Envoy perspective. So these two metrics, I would say metrics for now, but the first one is membership healthy, which is correlated to your service instances. So if you have four instances in console or Istio or any other service, service mesh provider, and that aligns with the membership healthy of uh, four healthy memberships here, then you're good to go. Um, but if there is a discrepancy, that can kind of help to understand if there is something going on in Envoy that may not be happening in your control plane. And then the health flags um, metric is more on the clusters endpoint. And so you can also use that with the membership healthy metric to see how Envoy sees things. I usually use these hand in hand. So we've gotten through a few metrics um, and we've uh, made sure that things were configured correctly. But sometimes there are a few things that can block you from troubleshooting even more. And so one gotcha that always gets me is um, if Envoy is working correctly or I don't see a configuration or stats in the, in the Envoy proxy, sometimes the more clusters I have, the more stats I have, that can be a resource constraint for Envoy on the memory CPU point. And specifically for Envoy and Kubernetes, you can make sure to increase resources at the container level. So these pictures are for console configuration on your left, and then Istio's way of configuring these resources on your right. And we also want to check that if there is a behavior on the downstream Envoy metrics that isn't to what you expect, double check on the upstream so that you can see how it really works. Um, for example, offz.rvac may show up on your downstream Envoy proxy and might not show up on your bottom or downstream um, proxy. So there's sometimes a bit more digging you may have to do, but also cross-referencing the Envoy documentation really does help. And lastly, Envoy metrics are super helpful, but you kind of want to accompany it with another tool, which could be TCP dump or uh, anything that can give you a bigger picture of what's happening. Sometimes service mesh providers also have their uh, troubleshooting tools that can help with it as well. And speaking of accompanying tools, in my free time, I was trying to wrap my head around how can I try to ease um, using metrics and different endpoints in Envoy to get a bigger picture for myself and for our customers who sometimes do have time, have some trouble um, troubleshooting things um, when they're just looking around in the mesh. And so I tried to create something called XD Snap, which is a tool to ease capturing Envoy data for wholesome analyzing. So you can think of this as really is like curling the container to make sure you get all endpoints, but I did add a bit more to make it a bit more user-friendly uh, to anyone using it. So in this command, it really is just checking the pod container and getting the snapshot of Envoy and intervals. So you really do have a more of a live, for lack of a better word, live way of getting um, this data. So we have the first command that just shows what happens when you do the interval. Um, and the next few commands is just showing you can easily use the tool outside of Kubernetes and it'll execute the endpoints. One example is just the stats. And the last command is just showing how it saves in intervals so that you can have multiple snapshots for analysis. I hope to add more to this tool so that you can analyze it and hopefully have like a TCP dump package. Uh, but I hope this tool can help some way uh, down the line, but I also hope that this presentation has shown you how you can do a deep dive into Envoy metrics. Thank you.